Hey, welcome back. Mike Burris here with Spirit Music Meetups. And we're looking at some old dreams and visions, some prophetic rhema. It's hearing directly from the Lord. And uh, there's a great book uh, that really started the process for me. It's called Four Keys for Hearing God's Voice by Mark and Patty Verkler. Go check it out. And this is from November 16th, just now getting to some of these, uh, 2020 Revelation to celebrate ahead of the new day and the new thing God will do in the USA. Now, it'll be interesting because this is, this is two years old. I woke up at 12 midnight, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and thought, how odd is that? I don't usually get up for the restroom until much later, you know, 1, 2 o'clock. Hasn't it always been an hour? Hasn't it only been an hour or so, <laughs> right? Because I go to bed at like 11. So I was like, wait a second, I'm, I'm, I'm awake. What's going on here? I heard, I literally heard, it was a new day. And I thought, I guess that's true because now it's after midnight. <laughs> no, not new in time. Then I understood the divine thought. All right, I get this divine think thoughts, these downloads. And then it meant new kind, a different than before. And I knew this from my studies of kainos and chadash in Hebrew means uh, absolutely, uh, completely different in kind. I knew this because when God says he will bring about a new covenant, Jeremiah 31, uh, so go check that link out, Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, and other places that talk about new covenant, that's quoted a lot in the, he, in the uh, Old Testament. That verse is quoted a lot in the New Testament. Uh, but when he talks about a new way, a new a living way, new spirit, new heart, new creation, new song, new thing, new name, new heavens, new earth, new world, new tongues, new commandment I give to you, Jesus said, new teaching, new life, new man, uh, new Jerusalem, new king, that none of these uh, use the Hebrew word tashiar, or the Greek, neos, which means, uh, for instance, Genesis 1934, which means newer in time or younger. None of them. None of them. But they use chadash and kainos, uh, Greek, the Hebrew and Greek, which means new in kind, fresh, completely different than what was before, borrowing nothing, unprecedented, a unique invention worthy of a patent, and implies that it is superior. So... You know, the Bible is not written, written in English, so English is very ambiguous. People that come here have to learn it as a second language. Uh, they said it's very confusing. So the Bible, thank God, was not written in English. But what they were communicating was not English ideas either. But we read into the text our culture and our ideas. So go look at Bible info. Well, I asked God, what's new about this day? He said, sing a new song for this new day, sing by the Spirit. I knew Ephesians 5.19 and Colossians 3.16 told Christians to sing spirit kind of odes. Now, pneumaticos is an adjective, means spirit kind. It always, in context, it's always the Holy Spirit, not human spirit, but the Holy Spirit. And this and kind of odes. An ode is a hymn or a a hymn, that's a cappella, or a psalm. It can be either a hymn or a psalm, which uh, a psalm is an instrumental music uh, accompanying uh, lyrics. So basically, lyric only or instrumental accompaniment. So that's what an ode is. So spirit kind of odes, unique because they are not pre-composed. They are unique. Uh, so when it's talking about bringing a hymn, a psalm, and, or a spirit kind of song, these are all separate things. They're unique. Because they are not pre-composed but are spontaneous uh, from the Holy Spirit. They're spontaneous by the means of the Spirit. So go look at that link. So you want to look at the link to these videos because there's a lot of information. There were, these were the same as the new songs of Psalms 33, 3, 43, and numerous, numerous other verses. And very likely what Paul said he practiced in 1 Corinthians 14, 14 through 15, 
which is singing in tongues. He was, he says, psalming in tongues. I'm psalming in tongues. And he means I can play my instrument, I can sing with instrument, but I'm psalming in tongues. And that's what is done by the means of the Spirit that belongs to me, belongs inside of me. I've studied all this as prophetic, anointed musician that call, God called me to be a while back. So you can see the story about that. So go look at those links. Spontaneous, prophetic, and anointed. So God was telling me to celebrate today by singing. Wow, what a way to wake up. Celebrate today by singing in tongues. Why? He said, because my people are to rejoice now for what the world will do at the great coming light in January. Now, I just, I, I just assume he meant this January. He didn't say this January, but he's, I just assumed. Rejoice, for I am doing a new thing today. Well, what is today to the Lord? You know, a, a day is like a thousand years. So it's just saying that God is not inside our time frame. So what is today for God? You know, who knows what that is today for us? And um, I and others were shown the darkness that was... To prepare for you. Maybe you saw that in God messages. To endure by faith, waiting for the great light in January. So just keep your eyes open. I thought it was going to be that January, and maybe there was some great light, but I, I, don't, I don't really, I don't remember any great light in January. I saw more darkness. And you know, a lot of things the Lord says he to Israel his people Israel, he said, you know, it made it sound like it was right around the corner, but they were in disbelief. They were not obedient by faith. And so they went into, uh, they, they went into captivity for 70 years. Uh, they wandered in the desert for 40 years. So if you're not participating, if you're not in Koinonia fellowship with the Lord, uh, who knows how long these things get take to get done. But God does get it done. So I believe it will be a January, and I just assumed, and so you know what assume means, it makes an ass out of you and me. Well, I asked God, what's so new about this day? He said, sing a new song for this day, this new day, sing by the Spirit. And so that's what happens. So God was telling me to celebrate today by singing in tongues. Why? He said, because my people are to rejoice now. See, it's ahead of time. He's asking for faith. For what the world will do at the great coming light in January. So the world, the world, the outside world is going to celebrate something in January. But we're supposed to celebrate now. Rejoice, for I am doing a new thing today. I and others were shown the darkness to prepare for, to endure by faith, waiting for the great light in January. Today makes sense because Dutch Sheets and other prophetic intercessors announced yesterday that at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, a large gathering will be live streaming nationwide. Now, this is way back, and I saw it. I actually got to see it. Unprecedented. Really, never happened before. It was new. <laughs> never happened before. Uh, this group that met. So this is back in 2020. What an event. Uh, large gathering, live streaming nationwide intercession in Pennsylvania, which turns out the real problems in Pennsylvania, at the mouth of a key river from our Independence Day in 1776, our Independence Day from slavery to England. They were an occupying foreign force. This is a clarion call to all of God's people to join with him, with him God, in this battle for freedom from the darkness that would consume our nation, that the, the rampant fraud that has occurred and, and the deception that has occurred and the protests and the BLM and Antifa and all these other protests, lawlessness, etc., are exposing. So the darkness is really coming out more since that time. We have seen even more 
we've seen so much darkness being exposed. We must unite with the God of truth and justice if we are to succeed. And it was an amazing event of prophets meeting at this crossroads of our independence. And they were declaring and decreeing and speaking into the world. And of course, they wanted to see this happen like right, right away in the next week or two weeks or months or whatever. And that's what I expected. But God has a lot of swamp to drain. <laughs> a lot of swamp. I mean, look at all this, you know, all this fraud going on, deception, protest. You want to read all the details out on my link here. So today, I write this like a year later, uh, December, uh, what is this, February 27, 2021, as I created this page, now here, <laughs> it's a year later, I'm disappointed that this great light in January that I was told about of 2021, I just assumed it 2021, did not come. It did not come, even though there was so much evidence that was presented by so many so many states and legislatures and and I saw 45 hours and hundreds of witnesses signed affidavits and it even was appealed through the uh, co-equal branch of justice system but it was all shut down I know that Satan has been hard at work but it's also possible that God meant a future January see we always just assume it's around the corner as I've noticed that our time frame often is shorter than God's because there is so much that God is trying to accomplish. And he wants to participate with his church. And a lot of the church was, is, has still, is still, is unbelieving. They have not been driven to their knees. They haven't had the truth revealed. They have not woken up to the truth. They're not awake. Much of the church. And as the church so goes the world. So if the church is dark, that was called the Dark Ages, that's because the Catholic Church was extremely corrupt, actually very evil, doing all forms of evil and oppressing and killing and all in the name of God. That's, what's re that what's, that's what religion does. It's very likely the new thing the Lord will create will be far more radically different than we expect. And we expect, a lot of people expected just one thing, but it, it very likely may be very much a bigger event. It might include the things we expected, but uh, because this will be made, there will be many more major changes before God springs this on us. Yeah, we haven't been driven to our knees. You know, that's, that's a lot of it. We have not repented. When, when the church finally wakes up and God has driven us to our knees in desperation God is going to allow you know we sow to the wind and we reap the whirlwind God says I will not be mocked you you will reap what you sow and nations have been driven to the to the bottom and we see that all through the history of revival society has to hit rock bottom but the church leads the way it hits rock bottom the church hits rock bottom it's at its darkest hour, before the sun rises. And so with the church, so with the world. God's people are still called to celebrate ahead of time the victory the Lord will bring about. That's why he gave me this dream. Because, you know, it's discouraging to watch the incremental progress of thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's really discouraging because you see the kingdom of darkness expanding. And it looks like it's expanding very quickly because it's never darker except right before the sun rises. And yet, the sun is making its way around the earth. You just don't see it. It's moving, right? The earth is moving, actually. But this, you know, so everything's moving in the universe. You just don't see it. It's so slow, so incremental. And then, voila, it happens. So you could say for a long time, wow, it's just, it seems like dark forever. Seems like dark forever. And then, bam, sun rises. So I believe that's what's going to happen. And he wants, he gives the words of knowledge, right, to his prophets. And he wakes me up at 12 midnight. Wow. Man. 
so we don't get so discouraged by the day-to-day -day news you know we see ourselves in a mirror every single day we don't really see change it, it we just say oh it's the same thing same day same as the day before we don't really see a lot of change but our hair is growing you know uh my beard is growing right now you know my organs are decaying in the name of jesus i'm believing healing <laughs> i'm believing the opposite of decay I'm believing restoration of my eyesight in the name of Jesus by his authority. But these things are changing. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not that they're not occurring. They're changing. And so the Lord shows his prophets ahead of time, hey, the sun is going to come up. The sun is going to rise. It the sun is making its way around. Well, actually the earth is making its it's turning so slowly you can't even see it. I don't see the earth spinning, but it's, it's 13,000 miles an hour or something crazy. Uh, something crazy. So we are to sing. He gives me this. And so I start singing in the middle of the night. And so he encourages us with the truth of what's coming so that we will sing a completely new song. And that is by the Spirit, which we know is by tongues. And there's verses about that. Well, I will welcome your input because the Lord has given you encouragement and we are to share this. Go read 1 Corinthians 14. This is about the early church, what you're supposed to do when you come together. Uh, prophet after prophet speaking while the others are listening. And way, and then it says, and then way, all way, all way in together. And it says, who are those all? All of the same kind, okay? It's not talking about all of a different kind. You say, how do you know this? Well, because, again, the Bible was not written in English. But you, you can't tell this in English. So I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 14 and Bible Gateway, English Standard Version. But again, that's English. But it'll help me find out this passage. I believe it's like verse uh, 20... Verse 20, oh, yeah, it's 1 Corinthians 14. The one, it says, it's talking about that, and then it says, oh, here it is, down in, he says, this is about what you're supposed to do when you come together in the church. Show me a church where it's doing this. What then, what shall, what then, brothers, brethren, when you come together, you is plural, y'all, uh, each one. Now, really, have you ever seen this in a church? Each one has a hymn, that's an acapella of music, a lesson, a teaching, a didache, a revelation, really? <laughs> Uncover a revelation from the Lord? That's prophetic. Uh, when's, when have you seen that? A tongue. <laughs> when, when have you seen that? A revelation is prophetic prophecy, a tongue, or an interpretation. And he says, let all things be done for the building up of the church, the building up of the body. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two, or at most three, because it takes a while. And each in turn, it says, and let someone interpret. That someone might be you. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. So there needs to be an interpretation if we're all going to benefit from it, because it says, for the building up of others building up of others because he says tongues builds up yourself right that's what it says tongues builds up yourself but if you interpret it, it builds up others but if there is no one to interpret let each of them these individuals with the tongues keep silent in the church and speak to himself yeah it's still good to speak to yourself because it was for you to be built up to and unto god because Tongues are the spirit praying first, and you'll find that out. But then let two or three prophets speak. So now he's just saying, "Hey, you know, let's balance this out. Uh, let the and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent." So revelation to is like a word of knowledge, an insight about somebody there. Let the let the first prophet. You know, there's one prophet after another. For you can all prophesy. You all, it says you can all. <laughs> one after another. 
Uh, you can all prophesy one by one. Remember, their churches were really small. So two or three might be a significant number in a small church. A house, ten people, you know. That's one-third of the people right there. One-third tongues, one-third uh, prophets, you know, six, ten people. There you go, everybody. So that all may learn and all be encouraged, all right? There you go. All may learn and all be encouraged. So if you look in, uh, that's 14, verse 29. You go to Bible Hub, 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Nine. In Bible Hub, look, click on interlinear. You're going to see how Paul actually wrote, wrote it, if he actually even wrote it, because he might have had a scribe. Because Paul's Greek is was terrible. Galatians is terrible. And it says, prophets, then two or three let speak, and the others let discern. And the word, therefore, others uh, is a loss which means another of the same kind, another of a similar type. And you can look at all the places alas is used, and you can see how Paul used that in, you can just click on English's library there, concordance, and I clicked on the 156 occurrences, and I'm going to scroll down to 1 Corinthians, and you can see how Paul uses this in his, in his letter. I, I uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 16, I baptized whether I baptized any other, other, other what? Other of a kind, similar kind. Uh, a foundation and another is building, power builds, he's talking about ministry. Someone lays the foundation and another minister builds up, blah, blah, blah. So... He's talking, you see, it's another minister. So it's another of the same kind. So you can see that's that's how he's using it. And then you can see how he uses it in, he gives to the Spirit, uh, by the Spirit, gets one kind of gift in verse in chapter 12, verse 8, and to another, the world, the, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, uh, message. It means message. So this is referring to Christians that have, the spirit within them, not uh, what he calls ignorant Christians. They do idiotis and ignorant, uh, two different words he uses, unlearned and uh, un unbelieving, Ag where we get agnostic. So he says, not, not to those people, but to the people of the spirit, the people who have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he talks about this all the way through. So we know how he's using this. These are people who have gifts of the Spirit. And there's many gifts of the Spirit. Go look at 1 Corinthians 12. So there's so many. And so what are we, we're getting back to the, uh, what we were talking about, Revelation. So he says, um, so we're going we're gonna to do this. We're going to sing by the means of tongues. And thank God for prophecy. And we're supposed to all weigh in together. Oh, that's the that's what I was going to say. And we, what it says, and we all, what does that say? Allahs of another kind, of, of the same kind. And let us discern the others, that is of the same kind, those who have gifts of the Spirit, not the idiotists or the agnostic, the unbelievers, um, diacrino. Let them diacrino. Dia is diameter. It means through the center of, through the realizing channel of. Crino means judge. So it means to judge through. And, and it's used as kind of, prepositions are often used to uh, intensify a word. So it means thoroughly, to judge or investigate, crit critique uh, through, thoroughly, all right, thoroughly back and forth, through, back and forth. And it really implies within. Diacrino implies, uh, you know, th through, um, throughout, wholly, entirely. So that's what the other, others that were in that body listening to prophecy, that's what body ministry is. You can go look at that. 
Body ministry is the rest of us in the Spirit that have the gifts of the Spirit. We're the ones that are to judge. And that's why Paul says, um, only those who are of the Spirit can judge uh, those of the Spirit. So you can type Spirit and Judge in the New Testament in, in Bible Gateway, and it says the Spirit kind of person. That's pneumatikos, the kind that are spirit kinds of people, not fleshly kinds of people, but spirit kinds of people, uh, real bona fide Christians. They judge all things. They can judge all things because the Holy Spirit is doing the judging, but is himself to be judged by no one. They're not supposed to be critiqued by no one. And in the context, it's talking about the natural man, the ignoramuses, the uh, idiotis, the idiots, the unlearned, and the unbelievers. They are, that's the context of the no one. So words are always defined by context. So you've got to read what he's talking about here. So thank God that we have the prophets. Ephesians 4 says this is one of the coaches and equippers. The peop and these are all ver verbal nouns, so the focus is not on a person or an office or a title, but on the action. It's like kind of saying the one, the ones prophesy, uh, the ones apostling, the ones evangelizing. It's preaching the gospel. The ones who are teaching, all right. The ones who are uh, pastoring. The word there is shepherding. The ones who are shepherding, taking care of the flock. And linked to this teaching. So it talks a lot about shepherds who are elders, who are um, episcopists, bishops, all these. The same words are used for the same group of people who are able to teach. So we know it's not a fivefold ministry, it's a fourfold ministry. The second group is a combination of functions. These are all functions, practices, gifts of the Holy Spirit that function in a certain way. It's not about people, because one person can have multiple functions, at, depending on what the Holy Spirit wants to do at that very moment. Okay, So let's go look at uh, gifts, if you want to understand that. If you go look at the, down on the bottom of every page, go look at gifts of the Spirit, so you can understand it. Well, I look forward to your, your gifts of the Spirit coming out in the comments on the bottom of this video and also on the page you find this video on. And again, follow the blog etiquette on my page, but also the policy and guidelines of whatever uh, whatever service you're using on, right? You, you know, it's like you're in their house, so you kind of have to follow their rules. God bless. Bye-bye.